Welcome to episode 28 of the official Geek Speak podcast. I am your host, Shantanamo Bay. That's not probably a good thing. And joined as always, it's my co-host, Josh Fresca Boy Rudy Rudolph. This is the podcast. This is... Nope. This is the podcast. This is a podcast. This is the podcast where we watch movies, make movies, play games, and more. What else can you ask for, Josh? What can you ask for? What else? Is that it? Are you happy? Bagels. So you want to add bagels to the podcast now? I mean, we can. In, in what sense? I mean, there's everything bagels. There's blueberry bagels. There's a lot of different bagels. So we should start eating bagels on the podcast now? I mean, we can. It's yeah. not going to be entertaining to the listener, but I mean, we can do it. <laughs> add some crunch. Exactly. That's what, okay, everyone, that's what else you can ask for. So now that question should go away forever now. I'm so sorry. I'll change the intro. If you're a new listener, thank you for listening. This is one of the few episodes in a while that Josh and I are in person together, which is great. We're having a good time today. Yeah. When we're recording this, tomorrow's my birthday, so it'll be fun. Uh, that's why he's here in person. We're hanging out for that. But it's also time to talk about news, because news happened in the world of geeky, nerdy, fun pop culture. Um, and then after that, instead of our usual Disney Channel movie reaction, review, fun, chat, interpretation, whatever, we are um, talking about two main topics, both around the MCU, with all of She-Hulk as a show and the movie special thing, Werewolf by Night, which is feature length. I'm surprised it's not just called a movie at this point, because it's mm. 55 minutes, and we're ending the show, like we always, with our super weird stories. That should be a jolly good time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. I am too. Let's talk about some sad news, though, first. <laughs> we had, this week, two deaths. Very close to each other, very big and very sad. Uh, Angela Lansbury passed away, who you might know, for all of our younger viewers, as the from Bed Noms and Broomsticks, for one thing, but also in Beauty and the Beast. She is Mrs. Potts. Not, pepper, not to be confused with Pepper Potts, that's a different pot. Uh, she was fantastic, great voice, um, great performer, both on screen and voiceover work, and she will be sorely missed. And I know my partner, for one thing, who's a huge Disney fan, is really, really sad about this. Like, her favorite movie of all time is Beauty and the Beast, and that's really hard. Mm-hmm. Um, I think one that affects both her, Josh and I a bit more than that is the death of Robbie Coltrane, who played uh, Rubius Hagrid, Keeper of Games. Nope. Yes. Keeper, keeper, of keeper of grounds. And, keeper of keys and game at Hogwarts. Because game is meat. He keeps the animals. He does. But that was a very tragic loss. Um, despite our views on the creator of Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling, who's a piece of shit bag. Uh, and there's a lot of bad things in those books. There's also a lot of good things in those books as well, as well as great performances all around from the cast of the movies. And Robbie Coltrane did a phenomenal job. Mm-hmm. Very, very sad. Uh, I woke up and I saw, I'm like, oh, this is going to be a fun day of sadness. Uh, very sad day. So, nay on this news. Big nay. Not a fan. We give yay and nay to every piece of news because uh, most things in life are subjective and not objective. However, this is kind of subjectively just sad. Yeah. I don't like this. I'm not a fan either. Death keeps happening. It's weird. And then, of course, in the Deathly Hall, people keep bringing up the audio of the Deathly Hallows Part 2. He gave an interview about how uh, Harry Potter will last beyond him, and in about 50 years, he won't be here anymore, but his kids will be, and his, their kids, and everyone's uh, family will live on. It, and it was actually from the 20th anniversary special they did that's last right. year, that's right. so it makes it even sadder. That's really sad. I'm glad he was there for that. Yeah. But that's tragic. Moving on to different, less sad, but also sad news, not about death. Um, I know what a wonderful segue. It involves Cartoon Network. Uh, so, a lot of people got confused about this news and think that Cartoon Network, the channel, is going away. Uh, that's not correct. Cartoon Network Studios, which is a company inside of the channel that does a lot of in-house animation work. You might be familiar with shows like Over the Garden Wall and other shows that use that studio to animate from um, as a company, and that is changing. Era consolidating. Uh, Cartoon Network Studios, as you know it, is gone. For good, thanks to David Zoslov, the current, I think, CEO of WB, mm -hmm. and he's changing things. He's consolidating all of it. And this is a huge news uh, piece because it's a bit of an interesting sign for the future of keep uh, just consolidating more and more things like this. It's just in his never-ending quest to just screw over every, anyone and everyone that works for them and just being like, we need to save money, so let's destroy the company from the inside out. And let's piss off everyone in the, in the meantime. Literally, again, like with every decision he has made, 
This does not do anything but hurt the image of the company. And yet he keeps doing it just to save some money. And yet it's also costing them a lot of money for doing this. I'm not happy with this news. Oh, no, it's total BS. I hate it. Nay. Yeah, I'll give it an A, too. But on other news involving a different competing studio to Cartoon Network is Nickelodeon. Oh, yeah, they exist. And in Nickelodeon, they created what I think is the best show of all time, Avatar The Last Airbender. And this week, we actually have Avatar The Last Airbender news. Not about the live-action show, but about Avatar Studios, the show run by Mike and Brian, who created the show, uh, and they created Korra. They are working on new things. They found their studio uh, for the new Avatar animated movie about the adult gang. Um, if you've not watched Avatar Last Airbender, you might want to skip this section and go to the next thing. In the, there's timestamps down below. There'll be some minor spoilers for the show as a whole. Here's a quick warning. Cool. Skip ahead. Good show. Yeah, pretty fine. <laughs> it's okay. It's, it's whatever. Um... It's my favorite show of all time. I think it's phenomenal. I'm still mad at my college for stealing my Avatar The Last Airbender Funko Pops. <laughs> I forgot about that. Uh, I don't have them now. I I can go and rant about that later, but I'm upset. He's spaghetti. Uh, we had this show. Well, this is an animated movie that will focus on Aang, Momo, of course, because Momo is still alive when they're adults. So Momo has a long lifespan. I love that. Uh, Aang, Momo, Katara, Toph, Zuko, and Sokka will be the main focus of this of them in their 20s. Things like a friend-style adventure, I think. <laughs> no, nothing but happiness and fun vibes. I'm sure things will go wrong because, as they always do... What do you mean? Nothing can ever go wrong. It'll be during, uh, I think, around the formation of Republic City, I think, or during that time of it already recently formed. But I am glad that this is being made. And they found their studio. They're going to Flying Bark. <laughs> which is they, they made the rise of the TMNT movie ooh that's cool and they did what if for Marvel Studios okay so they have good ex- so they have good expertise in both hand drawn and CG animation okay yes um, and they'll animate the 2D Avatar films coming to theaters starting 2024 coming to theaters we're getting Avatar films Josh I'm gonna I'm gonna put a pin in that and we're gonna see if it, <laughs> if it actually will <laughs> uh, that's something that uh, Brian Coney let's go is very very adamant about I, I'm all for it I'm a, it's about it's about Paramount is all for it. <laughs> they say it now, but things can change. I wonder why they didn't go the same studios they already did for the, for the shows, the ones in Korea. Maybe they could just be busy. It's just true. There, People be there's, busy. There, there's a lot of animes being made right now, made by very few studios, so they're very overworked. <laughs> yeah, but yay on we got this cool news, and they found their studio, and it's a good studio so far. I don't necessarily love uh, What If as a show, but I do like that they... The animation was well crafted. Mm-hmm. You cool. need to watch the Rise of TMNT movie. I plan on it. I'm excited for it. Other questionable animation news about the Mario movie. The Mario movie as a whole is a question mark. That's what I'm saying. What do you mean? It's the greatest movie of all time. We haven't seen it yet, Josh. It's the greatest movie of all time. Calling it now. Mushroom Kingdom. He. <laughs> We're perfectly timed. If it didn't pick up on the microphone, I burped as I said, as I said here. <laughs> don't finish the quote. You don't need to. Here we come. Oh my god. Oh, that was great. Why is he not saying "Let's a go"? It's the first trailer. I, it doesn't bother me. I anyway, just think it's really funny. The news about this movie is that Keegan Michael Key says in an interview that he, for a Variety, he improvised a song for Toad in the Mario movie. I am so loving that. I'm down for anything he does. And he's trying with his voice. Everyone else, we saw Bowser, we saw the king of the penguins. Everyone so far is trying, besides Chris Pratt. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that there was, like, you know, different... They tried different variations, and it could have just been, like, you know, the Brooklyn-type accent is the one that he could do the best. I'm willing to bet they tried Italian. I'm going to go on a limb here and say that. Again, it's Chris Pratt's Mario. It's exactly what I thought it was going to be, so it doesn't bother me. He should have been aggressively Italian. <laughs> so stereotypically Italian. No. True Italian, but also aggressive and angry the whole time. <laughs> I want or angry New York plumber Italian. So Bob Hoskins. 
bring back Bob Hoskins as Mario. <laughs> Even though Bob Hoskins is Australian. <laughs> bring, bring Joe Pesci. Honestly, that would have worked. Joe Pesci, Robert De Niro, <laughs> like there's Al Pacino. There's a lot of people that you could get that would be fun. They wouldn't know what they wouldn't know what a Mario is, but I think they'd do it. But yay on this news about Keegan Michael Key. I, I, yeah, yay. So moving on from Keegan singing a tune on stage of the recording studio, um, we have other news that is typically animation news involving Transformers. But this is a live action thing, maybe again. Is it yeah. live action? Mm-hmm. Yeah. With the weirdest casting news I've heard in a while. What a do. And when again, when I first saw this picture, like Josh said earlier to me, I also thought these people were dating. Because <laughs> I saw Michelle Yeoh and Pete Davidson. And my first thought was, who is he fucking now? <laughs> um, but they've both been cast in Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Which is confusing. And not just because the casting. Because Josh told me earlier that Haley Steinfeld is rumored to be in the movie as well. Still waiting on confirmation for that. I want to just double check that I'm not crazy right now. One second. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Rise of the Beasts is a sequel to Bumblebee. Okay. And is serving as a tribute to Beast Wars. Oy vey. Um... (laughs) I mean, I'll take that rather than the confusing timeline of the original series. No. Okay. So. <laughs> what? It's going to have humans? Maximals, which are the beast mor- mm-hmm. beast former. Be- be- yep. <laughs> the beasties. Uh, Terracons, which I don't really get into. And Autobots. Aren't the Terracons the dinosaur ones? Yeah. I don't like them. <laughs> I like Grimlock. He's fine. But... Well, Okay. Just, just because the timeline is confusing doesn't mean it has to be. Right. The maximum... Oh, wait, Michelle Yeoh's playing Arizor? Hold on. My only things of Transformers I know are the Michael Bay movies. I've heard of Beast Wars, and I vaguely know what it is. So, yes, this is weird. But it's still not as weird as whatever Michael Bay was doing in his films. Hold on, I might have... You know Rob Problem's going to be in this movie. Perfect. Wonderful. He's playing basically Optimus Primal, so the Gorilla Optimus Prime. Perfect. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? That is perfect casting. Uh, Anthony Ramos is Noah in this. Pete Davis is Mirage. Dominique Fishbach is Alina. And Michelle Yeoh is Arizor. Um, nay, because the beasts are supposed to be before the Autobots exist, really, in this form. Weird. Mm-hmm. Josh, what are you on your phone for? I was looking up who made the movie. Ah, who is it? The director of Creed 2, Stephen Capel Jr. Why? Why not? Got a gig and figured I can do something fun with it, I'm guessing. I mean, the director of Bumblebee made Kubo and the Two Strings, going from stop motion to live action. Another news. (laughs) (laughs) Adam is safe. What are... Oh! uh, (laughs) Adam Sandler is with the Safdie brothers... Uh, For another movie. Cool. He did Uncut Gems, which is a fantastic movie, and the first movie that made me believe that Adam Sandler could act. I remember uh, when I showed you guys, you and Taj, the trailer for it, you were like, I don't know how how to feel about that. Am I supposed to take it seriously? I'm like, yes! (laughs) Uh, It, it's great. Great movie, and I'm, the Safety also did um, many other films so far at this point that have been good. Yeah, they directed uh, Good Time, uh, Uncut Gems. Um, Benny, Uncut Gems. Be- <laughs> Benny also does a lot of acting, so you've probably seen him in stuff like Licorice Pizza or the Kenobi Show for the one episode he was in. He's weird in Licorice Pizza. <laughs> it's a, it's weird, a weird movie. It's a weird movie. Bradley Cooper in that movie is very uncomfortable. <laughs> he should have won an Oscar. <laughs> uh, yay. I, I give yay. Good I'll- Time is good. I like Adam Sandler starting to actually go more towards dramatic stuff. His Netflix movie, Hustle, very good. And he's not bad in the one with Jennifer Aniston on the boat. B- Murder Mystery? Yeah. I think they're working on a sequel for that, I think. It's not amazing, but it was fun. It yeah. Was, uh, I don't mind a, a two-hour killer. Look, if he's moving away from his bad comedies into this, I think that's a co- fantastic career move for him. But the fact that he got millions 
to go to a tropical area with his buddies and to be is kiss a hot woman for to uh, for a week a month on an end and then just be rich for a while and then keep doing it again. What was this scam? So, look, a lot of times he would pick his movies based off of like where he could vacation. I know, and he just bring his friends and put them in the sh- in the movie. That's that's wild, and it kept working. Anyway, yay! I give yay. Oh, we got the trailer for another live actional thing with Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell called Spirited. Mm-hmm. It's going to be on Apple yep. TV. It's a show? Movie. Movie, that's better. I'm glad it's not like a whole 9 up, 20 episode of show or something. Not, would not carry that long. Octavia Spencer's in it. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. The trailer's fun. Uh, tap dancing happens, and then they say, I was just following you. You're tap dancing? I didn't know how to do that. And Will Ferrell's a ghost. It is a musical ver- modern day version of A Christmas Carol, with Ryan Reynolds being the Scrooge type character and Will Ferrell being the spirit of Christmas present. What's funny is that Chris- A Christmas Carol in this universe exists. Like, the book mm-hmm. exists, or it actually happened. So, in this world, A Christmas Carol was a non fiction story. <laughs> It was someone just telling about like this is what happened. Charles so, Dickens was not lying. So does every Christmas Carol movie that came out since the book are those all technically biopics? No, they they're fictional retellings of the non fictional event, and this movie just happens to be have the same thing happen again. Look, Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell are starring in a musical. I'm not going to think about the logic behind it. Percy Jackson, he's a boy. You're observant. I'm aware. He's got black hair usually. He doesn't in this. I know people are going to be mad about it. Oh no, what a nightmare. We got three casting news. We got Medusa, played by Jessica Parker Kennedy, who I first read as Sarah Jessica Parker, which is a very different person. Um, and we got Adam Copeland, who's playing Aries, who's also a wrestler. Hmm. And I showed you. That actually fits perfect for how Aries is. That's what he looks like normally. Perfect. That's, yeah. that's almost exactly what I, I read Aries as in the book. He's very aggressive. And it seems great. And then Suzanne Cryer will play Echidna. Cool. Don't really know who Echidna is, but cool. Didn't they also announce Clarice? Yeah, that's a while ago. Was it? Uh huh. Uh. And she is swole. <laughs> Good. She should be. She's the daughter of Aries. Uh, I thought Echidna. Hold on. Am I? I just read this book recently. Am I? Am I dumb? <laughs> yeah. That's what I thought. Echidna is the one. She's the creature at the the giant hoop. <laughs> <laughs> the the Saint Louis Arch. That's the one. She's the thing at the top with the, with the pet dog. Oh, and okay. She goes crazy, and then Percy jumps into the river. That's like many miles away. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I just can't wait to see how they show visually, like the whole mist stuff of like what the humans see. It better be something so stupid and so funny. Literal mist. Just flows. <laughs> that fresca's spicy. Maybe make it make me burp. <laughs> oh, God. That fresca's spicy. It's not literally spicy, but it made me burp a lot, so I'm calling it spicy. Bubbly, that's a better word. That's how it works. Cool, all this casting. That's great. This show is not disappointing me at all yet in any casting. No. The casting is all on point. I the gods. Jesus Christ. They're fantastic. They didn't Pun intended have... with Jesus Christ. They haven't announced uh, Poseidon yet, right? No. Then I think if they haven't announced it yet, then it's probably Logan. That doesn't make sense, though. Shh, it's fine. All the other gods are, like, twice his age. It's fine. It, and they also not announced Athena. I'm like, are they going to do the same thing? just had repeat castings from the, sh- the I, movie? Honestly, I wouldn't be mad at that. It doesn't make sense. It's Kids that had never seen the original movies are going to see it and be like, cool. And people that watch it are like, hey, I recognize them. I think they've realized now, no matter what they announce, people are going to get mad. Right. Yay on this news. Yeah. So, spoilers here, potentially, for Black Adam. If you want to go in this movie completely blind, there's timestamps down below. You can skip the next section. Okay. Josh, there have been leaks. <laughs> there's always leaks. Uh, it looks like there's pictures of Superman on, on Black Adam in the post credit scene. Sounds about right. And he said, all he says is, we need a sock. I hope people are being just like it's like the greatest post credit scene ever and he says one line I mean I get the whole idea behind it but I just find it funny people are like people talk about it for weeks the best part about it to me is in the leak picture the emblem's bigger on his chest Hmm. 
in Man of Steel, it was okay. In Beagles, they shrinked a little bit. Now it's, like, actually full-size chest. Like, like uh. beautiful art. I'm like, thank you. The logos on people's chests should be big. I thought that it was decently sized. I can show you the picture when you do that. If you want to see the leak, or do you want to wait? Well, no, no, no. And th- not that. I'm talking about the original, like, logo he had. It's bigger now. And it's golder. <laughs> like, the, the yellow is a better yellow. It's like a mustardy gold yellow. Anyway, Superman's probably going to be in Black Adam now. But also, Dwayne, on the interview he did, hinted at it. You know, Black Adam is the most powerful person on this planet, but... Which is not true. No. <laughs> it's not It's not even true. Again, Shazam has the same powers as you, my guy. Um, his entire family has very similar powers to you. The Justice League, overall, has a very... Su- oh, whatever. Which also hints that Superman was off-world because he said that. Look, they're going to find some BS excuse when, they, when he finally gets a sequel in five years. They said that, uh, Dwayne said in the interview also, but the most powerful person in this universe has been on the sidelines for far too long. Oh, you mean Martian Manhunter? Green Lantern? Green Lantern? Dark Side? <laughs> there's, a, there's a couple. Cyborg? <laughs> there's a lot of powerful people. Yeah. Oh, you mean uh, the Atom, right? You mean the Atom. Oh, you mean Atomic Man? Oh, no. Have you... <laughs> there's, there's a oh, lot. Oh, you mean Rorschach, Noah Centineo? <laughs> Oh, I, I read comics. You know, Rorschach should definitely be on our team. Oh uh, no, you missed. You both missed the point of that book and just comics. Did I record? Please tell me you did. Yes. <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to double check that. Yeah, Noah Centineo interview was asked on the red carpet. Who would you want to join the JSA? He only could think think of Watchmen characters, and he only thought of Rorschach. He seems like the kind of person that Watchmen would be one of the few comic book movies he had seen. And what's funny about that also is he was then asked. Who you want to go up against? Who's a good match for Adam Smasher? He's like, oh, I don't know, man. He's like, come on, anyone, anyone in the DC universe. He was really pressed hard for it. He's like, you know, I think the Justice League would be a good fight, but like, let's go leave it up to Dwayne to decide that. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> First off, the entire league, each of them would be a bad match for you. They'd all beat you, besides Bruce. <laughs> Bruce would get squashed, but the rest of them are at least durable enough that they won't get squashed by you. And why would a hero team fight another hero team? Well, Adam Smasher's been both a villain and a hero, uh, but yes. I can't see Noah as a villain. I can't see him as an actor. <laughs> 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 Here's the thing. I don't like Noah Centineo. I do not like Noah Centineo's performances. I think he's serviceable for teen rom-coms. He gives exactly what they need. But right now... I think there's a reason that they've barely shown him in any trailers or anything. My first exposure to Noah Centineo was in The Perfect Date. Oh, that's a mistake. Which is a painfully average film. And then I'm like, oh, maybe he's better than other stuff. Oh, I no. saw him in other stuff. I first saw him in the first Tell the Boys movie. I thought it was fine in that. And then he kept showing up in other things. I'm like, please, stop. <laughs> no, Noah, I think you need a better agent. Yes. That's mostly what it is. You might be great in this movie. I am I want to know how you got this movie, though. That's what makes me very curious. Because I'm sure you're actually a great actor. I think a lot of great actors are put in bad roles and make them look bad. That's true. That's very. I, I'm not trying to just trash you as an actor. I'm sure you're great. Maybe. I'm actually not sure about anyone in Hollywood. But you're probably a great person. My issue comes down to the roles you're playing. But maybe read a comic book if you're going to play a comic book character. Just a few. At least the ones that you're in. Well, that's a lot. I, that's why I said a few. <laughs> now it's time for our news about Blade. Oh, yeah. The Vampire Blade. We talked about this last episode about Blade, and now we have more Blade news, and it looks like it's more and more confirmed that Blade is... Blade has now officially shut down all of pre-production, and they're looking for a new director, and they're developing the script completely. But the news about this is that... Not really news, that Mahershal Ali is still on board, and he is not leaving this project. Uh, and he'll have a major part in shaping the film's new direction now. All right. He's a great actor. I'm sure he's a great creative person overall, and I'm excited for this. I'm I'm happy that Marvel is actually being like, okay, let's take a time and let's figure this out and how to make it the best possible thing it can be. Because I'm sure when he called Feige <laughs> when he won his Oscar, he was not expecting it to be this spread thin at this point. Well, because I think at that point, like, the shows hadn't been created yet. No. And the timeline he was probably given was like, you know, it'll happen sometime soon. But then COVID happened and all that. But with that and the pushback of Blade, they also, because it's one cog in the MCU machine, they had to push back all of the other dates. Unlike what DC does, I'm just kind of, you know, let's fuck around and find out. Pushing back Deadpool surprised me. 
It doesn't surprise me at all. Which, but that just makes me wonder, like, what do they have planned for that then? Secret Wars. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's that's the answer. They push back four films. Push out. Push back Blade, Deadpool three, Fantastic Four, and Avengers Secret Wars, and presumably more that are in that slate of Phase Six that we have no idea what they yeah. are. I kind of. It kind of disappoints me now, though, that we're not getting two Avengers films in one year. I mean, it's good for, like, the effects artists to have more time, but, like, just imagine having two Avengers films in one year, though. Just pause on all the stuff for a little Give them, give these VFX artists proper compensation, proper hours, proper time, and to make decent shows and movies. She-Hulk, some spots look a little rough. Scar, which we'll get to, looks a little rough. Sorry for evading MCU spoilers. If you listen to a podcast about superhero stuff, maybe they're caught up. Maybe you're not. I'm actually not caught up, technically speaking. I still have to watch Moon Knight. I still have to watch Ms. Marvel. Knight. I've watched half of Miss Marvel. You gotta finish Miss Marvel. <laughs> I like it. Don't finish it. I'm going to. On the other news, we have Kang news. Kang, Kang boy. boy. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't even a bit. Wait, we'll be now. Welcome back, Kang boy. Um, <laughs> hey, man's gonna die. <laughs> That's not even the news. You just- I know, but just the the photo shoot Jonathan Majors did with Men's Health magazine, just being absolutely shredded. Everyone's just like, "Oh, uh, rip, rip to Ant Man." The King will see in Ant Man three is going to be a warrior variant. Oh God, he really is gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> so he is a variant that is a warrior version of Kang. So there's a focus on what the warrior would look like, who's been around through the ages and has developed every type of combat skill hmm. he could he could find. That's from Screen Rant reporting that. That's that's why that's why he's so jacked right now. That makes sense. So then it makes me curious then about Secret Wars and Kang Dynasty of like how they're gonna do the whole variants of him. If like every version we see is gonna be a variant, or if we will just get like you know a definitive one to focus on. I mean, technically we got different variants of Thanos. The like two in each movie we see are different Thanoses, which is a little weird. This is cool. Oh yeah. Uh, Jonathan Majors is going to have so much fun playing this part. Oh, yeah. Just just with his one, you know, technically one scene in Loki, like, you could tell, like, he's already going to have a great time. As he who remains slash Immortus slash Kang Boy. He's only Kang Boy now. I'm excited for this. We have one last note for the news. Harrison Ford. <laughs> we talked about it again in the last episode uh, last week about, Harrison, about Harry Ford and him maybe replacing William Hurt. <laughs> As Thaddeus Ross. <laughs> and now it seems that he is confirmed, according to Collider. Look, Harrison Ford, great actor. No one can deny that. I think he'll do great for the role. But I keep, I'm so excited for the press for this. He's going to hate every single second of it. It's going to be wonderful. He's going to hate him more than Star Wars. So he is officially confirmed to be in Captain America New World Order. Not in uh, Thunderbolts yet. Okay. Um, but... Is Captain America New World Order the Hulk film now? Because it's... It's the leader as the villain, who's a Hulk villain, with Thunderbolt Ross, a.k.a. the Red Hulk, as one of the now major characters in this movie. I highly doubt they're going to put him in a mocap suit. <laughs> Please do that for uh, Thunderbolts, though. They might make him Red Hulk and Thunderbolts if they keep him. That would make... That one would make sense. I mean, having... Actually, the- either could make sense. It could be... The plot is could end up being, during all the chaos of the world changing, we have the leader uh, taking advantage of that and using a gamma experiments during this time, capturing Thaddeus Ross at this point or damaging him to create, the, make him become Red Hulk mm. in the future while well, Sam has to stop it while also trying to keep the world in order despite the blip causing fractures everywhere. Yeah, I think there's a lot of potential and it's a very typical comic book thing to have someone else's villain show up in your thing and like, you know, you have to deal with it. I still, despite hating serpents, think the Serpent Society would be the perfect villain for Sam Wilson Captain America right now. I remember when people were saying that's what the next one was going to be called. Well, that's what would make sense. There's a lot of villains that would make sense. And it's not a Nazi this time. <laughs> <laughs> we're making improvements. That's what, no, we're not. We're having the leader who's... Uh, we're making I, slight improvements. I wonder if he actually is a fan of this franchise. Because I can see it happening. Uh, he's probably seen, like, some. but Maybe the- he's watched the Captain America films. Or the first one. I could see him like the first one at least. Probably the first, because I think he's worked with Tommy Lee Jones before, so I mean, that yeah. wouldn't surprise me. Is The first one's the most like Indiana Jones. Yeah. It's even about the fucking, you know, religious shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not in the same way. But yeah, well, it literally is a, the Red Skull's looking for a religious item. Yeah. And it happens to be the Cosmic Cube, 
Tesseract. <laughs> and then you, you have kicking him with the crystal skull. Aliens. Look, man, I don't I don't make the rules. <laughs> That's our news for the week. That's not bad news week. No. Stuff happened. Stuff did happen. Hey Josh. I don't know. You know what it's time for? Things. She Hulk and Werewolf by Night. That's crazy. Let's talk about She Hulk first. That's fresher to me. Okay. Spoilers for She Hulk. Again, there's timestamps down below. You are more than encouraged to skip ahead and then come back later for the rest of the episode. If you're a dude, bro, the things we're about to rip into the show, gotta be sorry to disappoint you, dude, bro. It ain't happening, dude, bro. Dude, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love the finale. That's I know yeah. people are mixed on it because some people say it should be more fourth wall breaking before that to help set it up even better. Like, like stronger fourth wall breaks. And that's even something that the director wished she could have done more of. I think it, that it progressed more as the show went on. At least that's how I, I uh, agree. thought. Well, you know, Jessica Gao, who is the showrunner of the, the, the show, wanted to have, like, this level of fourth wall breaking almost the entire time. Mm-hmm. The one. I like the jump to thinking my Disney Plus is broken. <laughs> Yeah, I really, really liked the finale of this show. Um, I love that, that it was about her stakes and her telling the audience, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're not going to have a big fight here. My stakes are real stakes. These are real problems in my life. Bring it back down a notch. Uh, the villain here is misogyny in general, but more so, the villain here doesn't even exist. We don't have a villain. The villain is bad fans demanding things. Yeah. Like, there's not a villain of the show because she's just kind of... Trying to uh, so, trying to figure out her identity and her life and struggle with these new challenges and accept both parts of herself, which she did in the end when she said both. I that's that's probably one of my favorite things because I remember like when the show was starting, people were just like, "Why isn't this building up to anything big or anything like that?" But like, it is. It's on the character side because this is how television works. This is how characters Have you work. Watched Friends, How I Met Your The Office, Parks and Rec. The plot's different. The plot is about the characters changing. Less about the world changing. Yeah, not every single thing of Marvel has to, you know, end in a big giant CGI battle of things. And this show, again, literally points out, she's like, why does everything have to end like this? Why can't we focus, you know, on me like we're supposed to? And there are some things that I wish were less glossed over in this show, like the Sokovia Accords being repealed in a one-off line. I mean, it happens a lot in the MCU. Or how Titania... Any of that didn't really make, none of her make sense to me. I thought it was funny. <laughs> like not one second of Titania in the show made any sense, <laughs> especially her funny. intro. They never explained her breaking through the wall of the courtroom. I, I did what want an explanation for that of what was happening with that, and it was never touched on again. And that really pissed me off. I'm like, okay, we're not gonna have break through the wall. Okay, next episode we're gonna pick up and say, here's what happened, why she's there. Any of that, moving past it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The, the whole problem thing of her exposing herself as She-Hulk is Titania breaking through this wall in episode one, and it's never talked about again. Well, I think I remember the creator was talking about how that episode was different. It was later on in the show. Um, so I think when they had reworked it, I think that part of that got cut. At least that's what I'm thinking happened. Gotcha. I mean, that would make sense, but it's still like, oh, why does she have powers? What kind of powers does she have? Why is she... She's a criminal, right? Oh, No. Why does she have a rivalry with her all of a sudden? It doesn't make sense. Yeah. I mean, I still... I, I have fun. It's a really fun show. I like how everyone thought Leapfrog was going to be a frogman, because they're different characters, genuinely. I don't know who either of them are, aside from so, Leapfrog. <laughs> Leapfrog is the villain, Frogman is a hero. And they did a good twist, because they both wear the same outfit. They Why? Do, family. It's the oh. same family. His dad is usually Leapfrog, and he's usually Frogman. Uh. They had a secret layer that was really fun with that. I love that. He captured a great character, forcing him to sew. Like, it was very Make me fun. a new costume. <laughs> that case, when they brought in Matt Murdock, was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Matt, Matt's depiction in this is more in character than the Daredevil show was. I, lo- I loved it. But it's still, and even though it, it being like more comic accurate, him being more lighthearted, however you want to consider it, it still felt like it was an extension of yeah. his Netflix one. It didn't feel like yeah. a completely different character. It's the same character. He's just in a sitcom now. That's fine. <laughs> He's had time to actually uh, get better mentally <laughs> instead of being depressed all the time. He's wearing yellow now. He's having a good, jolly old time. <laughs> he did the walk of shame. He's doing great. He is not ashamed. That was the walk of <laughs> that was the walk of pride. Again, Matt Murdock is a whore, and we're fine with it. Also, he's not because he's a family man. He came to the cookout at the end. I love the 
my mind just seeing that family cookout, I was just like, this is Fast and Furious. Yeah, I love it. I <laughs> Who's going to say family? They mentioned kids. They mentioned grandkids. Favorite moment in this show? Oh, God, that's so tough. Or a laugh out loud moment. How about that? What, what what was it? It was the fourth. The fourth episode was probably the funniest to me. What was that? I gotta look it up. That was weeks ago. Madison, that's the fourth episode. <laughs> One lie, two ends, but not what you think. <laughs> that that whole episode, I th- I thought it was so funny. That dude was really willing to fuck her with demon guts in her hair. Yep. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Mean green. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll talk about the best part of the show to me, and that is the finale. The whole episode. Oh, yeah. From the intro, shot for shot, being a pretty much recreation of the 70s mm-hmm. uh, Lou Ferrigno Hulk show. Um, even the chair and the light on her face, yep. uh, the flashes of lightning, the, and they said the Savage She-Hulk, which is the name of her first comic book appearance. Hmm. I like how the Hulk got to be incredible, where She-Hulk was savage. <laughs> Like, really? Really, Stan? Savage. Kind of sexist, but all right. I've read a little bit of She-Hulk. I've read the John Byrne part of that run. It's great, and it felt very in character to this show. I loved this. I loved Kevin. <laughs> he has a little hat. He does. Kevin Feige also refused to voice Kevin the robot. Ah, that would have been so fun. I think he didn't want to make fun of himself. But I love it that the only thing he had a problem with the robot was the hat. <laughs> and they still had the brim of the hat into the robot and some red lining. Oh, God. But that last episode was so, so creative in ways I wasn't expecting. Because when it was starting, you know, to be the whole big finale of, like, when John Bass's character, you know, hulks himself up and then Titanio shows up and then Bruce shows up out of nowhere and going to become this whole thing. I'm just like, are we doing this? And then Jen was just like, are we doing this? I'm like, Wait, what? And then she literally busts out of her show on Disney Plus and into the documentary series Assembled. I thought my Disney Plus kicked out of itself for a second. <laughs> I was so on board. I I wish that um, She Hulk uh, ran to Tatiana Maslany just like outside of the show, like on the on the lot, studying her script or something. Yeah. Uh, also, the fact they had to have uh, her transform out of frame because of budget. Great lines there. When she asks, when are we getting the X-Men? She just sits down and gives a thumbs to the audience. Fantastic. Four. Uh, it was a great, great moment. That half the episode was her just talking to a robot named Kevin. No one talks to Kevin. The best part of that to me is that was the, that was the actual Marvel Studios office. Uh-huh. And that was the actual secretary at the time. Yeah, I, re- I re- read someone's tweet that like works at Marvel. It's just like that NDA, yep, everyone has to sign that. <laughs> Yeah, and that was the actual work at the time receptionist. He's gone since then, mm-hmm. or like been promoted. But that's fantastic. He, uh, Jessica Gal wanted it to be that if you watched the show, then went to the uh, Marvel Studios, you would see the receptionist and be like, wait a minute. <laughs> and it'd be the same guy. And you're like, am I in that world? That was the uh, idea of that, which I love. Mm-hmm. I, lo- I love seeing a show written by people that are fans of like the universe that they're in and actually like want to do stuff with it and make poke fun at it. Literally, like, week by week, you know, Twitter reacted the way that Twitter was going to, and the show somehow knew it, which is really funny. Even about other things, like the Thunderbolts announcement being mostly a lineup of super soldiers, and then this show puts one of, oh, more super soldiers? Isn't that a little derivative? Like, that's, oh my god! It's so brilliantly done like that. that I don't know how you predict that far in advance. This, you got really good writers. <laughs> and also, you can just ask Kevin... You can ask Robot, Robot Kevin some questions, probably. Say, is this a good thing going to happen this time? Yeah, that makes sense. That would probably work yeah. out really well. But really well done. I like seeing her super student in the show. It's a very good time. Very fun time. Again, if you're a dude bro and you're mad at this and you hate the finale, I hate to say it, but I don't think you quite understood the finale. Yeah, but also, if you don't like the finale, you're not like an automatic dude bro. You're not an automatic sexist person. For no, no, no. For not, you're allowed to have valid criticisms and just not enjoy something. That's always okay. If you don't enjoy it because of them calling out toxicity and calling out the sexist themes, maybe you're a sexist. Well, the fact that Pug was like, yeah, women suck. Oh, female, sorry, females suck. <laughs> I, that killed me. It was just like, just say female and they'll, they'll uh, automatically put you in. Okay. I hope that for the next season that we get more, just kind of more with her and like, you know, like her co-workers and uh, more lawyering, essentially. 
Because I think that there was a good amount, but I I think that there there's so much that they could do with it. I appreciate the balance for sure of her personal life superhero ish ish stuff mm-hmm. and this. I also love that her superheroing was mostly about her law cases and just like hold on, stop this, please. <laughs> Yeah, like, the only time that she did, like, any kind of superheroing was, like, when Wong um, needed her help, and that was ba- ba- that was basically it. And Leapfrog, which was saving someone. <laughs> she was saving someone who benefited her, and she stopped someone from having a big, like, law case. I love it when uh, she was fighting uh, Leapfrog and his uh, henchmen that uh, Daredevil was starting to chime in with, like, legal advice, and Leapfrog was just like, is that guy a lawyer, too? He's like, no, I just really like law uh, dramas. Yeah. They should bring uh, Megan Thee Stallion back for the next season. Megan Thee Stallion was hilarious. <laughs> the fact that they introduced a mutant in this movie, in this show, did you know that? Who was it? Uh, um, was it Mr. Invincible? No, the immortal Mr. Immortal. Mr. Immortal, that's what yeah. he's called. Oh. Huh. He's a mutant. <laughs> yeah, Marvel right now is just like, just casually dropping in mutants. Just like, yeah, here's some. Yeah, he's in, this, he's in the New Warriors with Squirrel Girl and other characters like that. Hmm. He's a fantastic character. I mean, he's stupid. He's very stupid. He's, okay, he's better than the comic book, but not much better. <laughs> he's also not usually like a 60-year-old man. Like looking like, He usually looks like he's 25, 30. Like most superheroes do tend to look. Um, but I loved it. I love that whole interaction. All the women like, they're trying to get what they can from him. That was great. Um, that I, was fantastic. I really hope the next season we see even more like C and D list uh, heroes show up. Just like, because this one show really helped build out this world a lot. Right, and it's the excuse I always hate of saying mutants couldn't have been there the whole time. Yes, they could have been. Because and people, people say it's lazy that mutants were always there the whole time. No, it's that's what makes more sense. We've only focused on this one little family mm. the entire time. It's like, in our entire war right here, it's like if I, right here, living in Virginia, said, if I said, uh, Russians can't exist, I've never seen one. What do you mean? <laughs> what? Because I'm in Virginia. This is how it works. Like, Mutants can exist because we're focusing only on one singular unit of people, pretty much. We're focusing on the Avengers. That's it. And they're silly struggles. Yeah, it's like, you don't expect like to watch Moon Knight and suddenly see, like, you know, Charles Xavier show up. That'd be, be very random. And in fact, in fact, the fact that we're able to introduce more shows with more characters proves that people have been there the whole time. Mm-hmm. Well, so there are other characters and other heroes that just exist, and we keep accepting it as they get introduced, but we, don't, we want, can't accept it as they've been there the whole time. That's dumb. Yeah, it's like the it's like every Netflix show. Like they don't ship. You don't have to see the Avengers. Like they might name drop them, but that doesn't mean that we have to see them to know that they exist. Or like Agents of Shield. That's still happening, but like, does it matter? No, it's still happening in the background. Mm-hmm. It's okay for the less know that things are happening in the outside, and now we're shining some light on it. Yep. Bring in the X Men as in they've always been there. Please, that'd be really cool. Yep. The- Give me Charles Xavier and his stupid giant uh, yellow hover chair. Again, how does he get that thing through doors? He mind bends the doors. How does he get out of it? He doesn't need to. Are you telling me that it has a built-in toilet? Yeah, he just shits in it. That's, no. It's just shit in the yellow. <laughs> it's because it's, 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 it's yellow. You can pee in it, and it just blends in. I'm fine with it in, like, a cartoon. I'm not going to question it in a cartoon, but in live action, he has I got Gene lift him out of it and <laughs> float him in the toilet. <laughs> he asked Logan, carry me. <laughs> like in the movie Logan. <laughs> Uh, Any other thoughts on She-Hulk besides great? I've I've loved it. Uh, it's my number two favorite show at this point for Disney Plus. I can go back. I go back and forth between if it's Loki or this. Uh, it That's just, why I am too of Loki or that. But number one for me is Hawkeye. Still, and you don't agree. I don't care. <laughs> Look, when Christmas season comes around, I'll rewatch it and I'll reevaluate myself to see if I'm still right. Like your ex commentary. <laughs> Look, that was all. There you go. Werewolf by Night also happened, and that was another fun thing. It was called a Marvel special presentation um they can get away with a lot of blood for black and white I mean it's black and white when you have that you can get away with a lot I more like I watch it with my mom and she doesn't like violence that much mm. and she's like oh god I'm like, I'm like I didn't expect it to be that much <laughs> cause we still know what's happening it's still like decapitations and shit yeah but pe- limbs get cut off people get stabbed like blood and hits the screen okay Josh what do you think the story was in World of Night spoiler oh again she Hulk's done. Spoilers for World of Fight Night. If you want to go back in time now, look at the She Hulk stuff. You can. If you want to go skip forward, if you if you've seen World of Fight Night, you can listen to this. But there's always timestamps down below. What's the story, Josh? What happened? 
there's uh, people, they like to hunt and kill monsters, and they're just like, all right, we got this magic rock. Uh, whoever kills this monster first gets the magic rock. Uh, but one of them is a monster themselves, and they don't know that, except for the monster, because he knows he's a monster. You should be familiar with that magic rock. I should? Absolutely, you should. We've talked about all this podcast before. Interesting. <laughs> Do you remember we talked about John Jameson, the, the astronaut? My son, the astronaut. Oh, <laughs> the Bloodstone. Oh, that the, makes more sense now. Yeah. That oh, was, okay. That was, and remember Morbius like put him on him and tried to mm-hmm. po- like poison him with that and stuff. Like, yeah. If you go listen to past episodes that you can find in the Super Weird Stories one episode, we talked about the man wolf John Jameson, and the Bloodstone is part of. He's trapped. It gave him a hit more of his werewolfness. Um. But the Bloodstone family is in this, in this special movie. I'm going to call it a movie. It's a movie. It's pr- it's a movie. It's, it's 55 minutes length. long, but that's a movie. It is feature length. Good time. Oh, very. It, I don't think it's the best thing I've ever seen. No. But it's really fun. Oh, yeah. And Michael Giacchino, or Giacchino, uh, who is known for composing amazing things like the Apes films, Incredibles, the Batman, other uh, incredible scores, decided to direct. And he directed this. And he did good. <laughs> The, has, this has some amazing camera work, mm-hmm. some great visuals, amazing composition of shots, uh, beautiful lighting. It's incredible. Mm-hmm. Like the amount of, I guess if you're a working industry long enough, you know what all the jobs do. Yeah. So you can like, I can try this. And they let him try. Uh, I love that. Yeah. Also, I'm glad that, like I said before, two weeks for two or three weeks ago, my report was wrong about being half hour and bad. It's not that. No. It's longer than that and good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the story Bloodstone was in the family. It does magical monstery things, and our main guy, Gael, that's the actor's name, uh, Jack Russell, which of course is a joke about Jack Russell Terrier, the dog. Uh, you said that hot every time I bring it up. Oh. Do you just forget every time? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> This is the third episode in a row. I've explained that, and Josh is always forgetful. I'm like, huh, it's fun. Look, it's it's a nice reset. You get to say the same jokes, and I'll get to laugh. Jack Russell is a werewolf by night, ah. and he has to free his friend Man Thing or Ted. <laughs> uh, and at the end, we hear somewhere over the rainbow while Loved the it. color comes in. Loved it. It's a good time. Yeah. I think if the the filmmaker part of me, if I'm going to make any stupid complaints, I'll make this stupid complaint. It is very well shot. It's lit very well. But because it was shot digitally and not on film, it looks too smooth. If they were yes. able to, if they got to shoot this on film, then it would truly get that back to like 1930s black and white type of feeling they were going for. But granted, if you don't care at all about it, then it's not going to bother you. It doesn't bother me after, like, five minutes. I had to get used to it. Also, to be fair, it is taking place in 2022, current, or 2023, yes, or 20... It's taking place in Whatever current, the present day is in Marvel. Right, it's taking place in current MCU present day, and they show that by, even just the clothing they're wearing is very clearly, like, this is stuff that you can, that you'd find now. Mm-hmm. Like, main girl, who at first thought was Jessica Jones, for half a second, because the outfit, like, mm-hmm. the, it's black and white. I can't, I just couldn't tell as much. For like a good five seconds, but I'm also kind of face blind sometimes. So sorry, world. I'm not good at faces. What's her name? Oh, Bloodstone is her name, but what's her first name? The I character? Want, I want to say Jess now, but I know that's not it. Jessica Jones? No. Who's <laughs> Elsa? She's good. Yes. I thought it was interesting that they all decided to hurt each other in the arena because they didn't have to. Mm-hmm. There was no like goal. There was no gaining anything from killing each other but they just had to kill each other like because whoever kills the monster gets a stone so and it's your opponent yeah better, better chances yeah which I think is really fascinating mm-hmm. and the could have something we can all work together no murder each other I think what looking back on it one of my favorite things is because of how short this is I'm very happy that they focused on the characters that they needed to focus on because there was the other hunters there but they knew that it wasn't important to like focus on them and like you know take the focus away from uh, Jack and Elsa and Ted I like calling man thing Ted and it also alludes to a lot of more weird stuff in the MCU that we have not seen yet yeah there's a lot of dead monsters in this house so I really want to see more of that. The, the action in this was also very well done. Yes. I'm not tired. Yeah, it was great. Really good time. I heavily enjoyed it. 
I actually don't have many thoughts on this movie. I wouldn't say it's like a like a spooky horror movie. It's like it's horror movie light. It it fits our last episode criteria of spooky movie better than the horror. Yeah. So, like um, it's it's got the vibes there of the classic monster movies of like Universal. So if you love those, then you would definitely vibe with this. And also practical makeup. I love it. I'm happy they used it. Good Wolfie. It's weird they used uh that they had a, a practical man thing uh stand in. Yeah, so hopefully when we see Ted again in the future, I hope that they use um, pr- uh, practical effects. I wish that they had their costumes with more contrast, though, in this. Some yeah, of the yeah. uh, production design, some of the... We're well, working black and white. You can't just dress normally, which no. they did mostly just... It felt like it was mostly just dressing normally. That way, on black and white, it will fit and look better, and you can see everything uniquely. It was probably because they knew at the end they were going to turn it back to color. They made the conscious choice of just being like, because we're going to do that, we kind of had to keep it consistent. Because if it wasn't that, it would look weird when you go from, you know, the bright right. contrast to then all of a sudden, like, you know, that. So it's kind of a shame on that part. Um, but otherwise, really fun time. Very fun time. I want to know how he locked himself up at night. Because he says it once in every full moon, he locks himself up. Right. But we saw the cages that he was locked in. He, he's probably got, like, a whole system, like, built in, like, his house or something like that. that can it just fires that- fire on him or something. <laughs> Uh, fun time. Yes, I hope I hope we see these characters again in the future. Would you enjoy more Marvel special presentations? Yes, but I want... Give me Dazzler! <laughs> but I want it to be something that doesn't need an entire movie um, for it. Some people were like, this should be origin stories. I'm like, yes and no, it depends. Like, I think there's, like, fun stories. I saw someone pitch, um, like, a classic uh, Janet and Hank uh, Ant-Man and Wasp kind of thing uh, like showing something back when they were doing like I think something like that that doesn't need to have its own whole thing built in I think would be a fun thing to do for special presentations but someone said like Nova is now going to be one I'm like I feel like Nova should be a movie yeah we've already seen the Nova core so that's that should fit, it would fit the movie very well yeah that's it for this episode, everyone. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, you can email the show or tweet jo- only Josh directly. Only me directly. I will respond with inappropriate uh, gifts to the situations. He only uses gifts. He uses so, so much. Again, it works perfectly for comedy. Even in sincere conversation, he uses gifts. <laughs> so you can email the show at podgeekspeak at gmail.com. Or you can tweet at us at hashtag GeekSpeakPod or at GeekSpeakPod on Twitter. Um, We actually have one submission. uh, But yes, we had a submission to talk about the Orville soon uh, by John Coughlin on Twitter. And we'll probably do that at some point. Uh, Josh, where can people find you online? Oh, I'm I'm places on the internet. uh, Mainly the internet. Um, (laughs) What? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at J underscore Rudy28, Instagram, J underscore Rudy16, YouTube at Josh Rudolph, and TikTok at film under Rudy underscore the film nerd. That's my TikTok. I've totally been on there recently. You can find me on Twitter at the Theater Nerd. You can find me on TikTok and Instagram at that nerd in theater. I post content on TikTok the most right now. Uh, it's mostly stuff about pop culture and stuff like that on here. But we're also filmmakers, and I have a film right now in post-production. I just saw version two of the cut. It's coming along very well. Uh, Josh was actually a gaffe on that film. It's called Fragile Halls. You can find it on IMDb. Um, that's pretty cool. Yeah. The lighting in the church is impeccable by me. Totally wasn't done by the sun. Thank you all so much for listening to this podcast. We really, really appreciate it. If you could follow on or subscribe on any podcast platform that you're listening to right now, it would be great. Leave a five-star rating if it's available. And tell your friends. Um, we'd love to get more people listening to the show. Yes, we would. It'd be nice. Listen with your ear holes. And on that note, goodbye.